Today is part two of Dr. Doug Graham's video. Go ahead and enjoy it. And again, your comment or your question of the day, because I don't have it at the end of today, is tell me your thoughts. Go ahead and post it down below. And I always laugh at the people who tell me they're on the Candida diet. They've been on it for years. Uh, they've, they've been on this Candida diet for years uh, because they can't beat the Candida. I'm going, you think you're on an anti-Candida diet, but you actually, it's appropriately named Candida diet. You're causing Candida if you're having it for more than days. You should never have it for years because it's just supposed to take care of, the, it blooms, it eats the excess sugar, and then you get back into healthy living. Well, if it's not healthy living, then it's possible to drive blood sugar up to excessively high levels and not bring them back down if you're continually causing the problem. And so far, we haven't found a second cause to this excessive high blood sugar that won't come back down, other than an inability for the insulin produced by the pancreas to escort the sugar out of the bloodstream. Mm -hmm. Granted, if you're not producing sugar, if you're not producing insulin, well, then that is a, an issue. But that implies a pancreas problem that has to be dealt with. Right. In terms of the straightforward chemistry, if the insulin can't escort the sugar out of the bloodstream, then the sugar can't get out. And yes. this is a problem. You end up with elevated blood sugar and candida just keeps blooming and blooming and blooming and you'll end up with a candida problem. Right. What keeps the insulin from escorting sugar uh, has been taught to us by the sports physiologists primarily. They say clear cut. The more fat in your diet, the less effective insulin is at getting sugar out of the bloodstream. And this is important to the athletes. They want to know because they want to get the sugar to their cells not just in the blood, they want to get into the cells. And we've seen that the, the phrase is called uptake, transport, and delivery. The uptake, transport, and delivery of sugar is compromised as the fat in our diet rises. Some people say 10%. When your fat intake goes above 10% of your total caloric intake, I've heard people say 15%. I've never heard anybody say higher than that. Whether you want to choose 10 or whether you choose 15 as your target, I don't think that's a critical issue. Uh, I'm going with 10, it's a little more conservative. We've seen the best results there. We use 10% of fat as our total caloric intake as a maximum number that we're shooting for. If your adrenals are in the toilet, if the thyroid isn't functioning normally, if your pancreas isn't functioning normally, it's impossible to expect that you would also have normal, normal candida function. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to deal with those health issues in order to get candida to finally settle down. And that's going to be done through lifestyle management, possible fasting, or whatever it's going to be. Yeah. But when the, when the candida issue is up and down, we normally don't even notice it at all. We just don't see it. What we're looking to have happen is to affect the uptake, transport, and delivery of sugar into and out of the bloodstream. And what we find is when fat consumption goes beyond 10% of calories, this does not mean how fat you are. Mm. This does not indicate how much fat you should eat on a given day. Because many people eat 1,000 calories a day, and many people eat 4,000 calories a day. The guy eating 4,000 calories a day can eat four times as much fat, and it will be the same percentage of total calories consumed. Right. That's the ticket. That's what the physiologists have shown us. That's what the medical researchers have shown us from the Framingham study to the China study and everything else in between, from Campbell to... I mean, the, from McDougall, from McDougall and, yeah. and Howell and Pritikin and Esselstein, they yeah. all recommend 10% as the outside upper limit of fat consumption. And I agree with them. They all use the phrase 80-10-10. They do. None of them use the phrase the 80-10-10 diet. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Yeah. But they, I, I mean, I didn't originate 80-10-10. They right. did. Right. I just coined the phrase 80-10-10 diet applied it to a raw food diet because it made more sense for reasons that we would talk about in a different interview. Yeah. 
uh, compared to a complex carbohydrate diet, and it was, to me, a sweeter program. Yeah. Made more sense ethically and made more sense from a health standpoint. But essentially, candida in raw foods does not have to be an issue. It helped thousands of people overcome chronic, systemic candida by simply putting them on a low-fat program. Yeah. End of story. Well, I think what's, what's an interesting distinction that, that I hear from you, and maybe not some other people, is that the, the high-fat, low fr- oh, sorry, <laughs> the, the high-fruit, low-fat, high-sugar, high-carbohydrate, low-fat, works if there aren't any of the underlying issues. And I think well, that's nothing the, works if there's underlying issues. And I issues. think that's the biggest thing that, that, that I think that's the misunderstanding that I hear from people is because you know people say Well people like to think that diet is everything. Right. And when it comes to developing health, diet is not everything. Yeah. Everything is everything. And they're all equally important. And what's the most important in that regard is the weakest link of whatever you have going on in your particular health package. Health is unique to the individual. But if you have an organic problem, if you have an adrenal problem, or you have a pancreas problem, or you have a thyroid problem, this has to be dealt with. You can't expect health to happen in any arena while those things are going on. It just won't won't work. But we get very myopic in our view of health. I mean, it's, it's true for almost everyone. This is a people thing, not just a raw fooder thing. I mean, the yoga people think yoga is the answer to all of mankind's problems, and the meditators think meditating is the answer to all of mankind. And the bodybuilders tell us running is a waste of time, and the runners tell us that's all they need to do is run. And and, and we do this in many, many different areas. It's not just raw food that we like to to just package it into one thing. What's the answer? It's everything. It's right there. And it's not. Um, Life is a much richer fabric than just... This one thing is the answer to everything. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you for sharing. I'm glad that we, uh, that we talked about it on the show. If you I could say else? one last yeah, please. I would say that I agree with all the people who say that the high fruit diet won't work. Okay. It won't work as long as you are also on a high fat program. Mm-hmm. On high fat, high fruit will not work. Right. But if you're eating a diet that is composed of more than 80% of your calories from simple carbohydrates, you invariably are consuming fewer than 10% from protein and fat. And that just works every single time. Great. I just haven't found the exceptions to it. Great. Foodandsport.com? Bless you. Thank you. All right. Kevin Gianni and Dr. Doug Graham.